Hello, I'm Lydia Talbot. Welcome to Sanctuary. Consider this, oil, natural gas, and water. Every person in the world depends on them for transportation, heating, cooking, and countless daily tasks. But is our expanding consumption of energy resources a violation of environmental ethics, a human folly, and even a sin against the will of God? Recent advances in oil and natural gas extraction that uses millions of gallons of groundwater, known as hydraulic fracking, have turned Southern Illinois and its vast resources into a battleground. The fight is between corporate interests who want to extract enormous amounts of formerly inaccessible oil and natural gas and point to economic benefits from the process, and their opponents who warn of environmental dangers contamination of groundwater, depletion of freshwater, risks to our air quality, and migration of hazardous chemicals to the surface. In the next half hour, you'll hear the startling facts from people close to the pulse who will challenge what you think about your politics and your faith today on Sanctuary. I'm a true patriot. I love my homeland. Patriot means fatherland. This is my homeland. I have nowhere else to run to. I have nowhere else to go. The breath of Wijikawanwi wrestles and tumbles and tears at the matrix, pulls and chews, tearing at the imagery, the activation of my first memory. One of the oldest ceremonies of homeland, of history, rattles, eagle bone whistles, dancers and drummers keep the rhythm of history in the inner circle of women singing when first men painted color onto stone. My name is Barney Bush. I'm born and raised here in this country. And uh, I'm a des descendant of uh, lots of people. But mainly all my forebears were Shawnee people and other tribal peoples. And we're from here. My ancestors are said to have come across the Wabash River or the Ohio River to Shawneetown, being pursued by colonial militia back in 1809 or 1810, depending on whose dates you accept or that I accept. Where we are, it's called High Knob. All around here are hollows, things that my ancestors hunted and fished in, swam in, had children in, gave names in, had uh, uh, puberty ceremonies in. This is our homeland. This is our land. This is, this is where we dream. This is where we pray. Fracking is the extraction of gas from beneath the surface of the earth. They inject a chemical into the depths of the earth and it shoots out and it causes the fissures to crack open and release the gas that's contained in there. Well, you know, it takes about a million gallons of water a day to extract that uh, for each well, by the way. My name is Beverly Walter, and I am one of the founders of Kapow. And Kapow is a citizen's act to protect our water. Water is life, and there's only so much of it. And those of us who are living now are literally drinking the same water that the dinosaurs had. There's a hydrological cycle. What is in the rain comes down, it goes down to the ocean, and it, then it comes back up as rain. What we do to the water is going to be us one of these days. And the problem that we're facing now is there are more and more of us. We're supposed to be 9 billion by 2050 or so. And 
there's just not going to be any more water. Mars is not going to come by and drop a lot of water on Earth. So we have to make do with what we're doing. And we're making more and more demands on water, more and more people, more and more industry, more and more products, and more and more pollution. My name is David Ulrich, and I'm the executive director of the Great Lakes and St. Lawrence Cities Initiative. Fracking both for natural gas and oil. We are injecting high volumes of chemically laden material uh, into the subsurface, uh, breaking up the rock, releasing the oil or gas, bringing it back up, uh, contaminating the water that's being used and potentially contaminating uh, groundwater sources for drinking water purposes and for surface water. We turn on the faucet every morning and beautiful, fresh, clean water flows out. Do not take that for granted. We look out onto Lake Michigan in the morning and it's always there. We cannot take that for granted. We need to, number one, understand how important it is to our lives. We can live a lot longer without oil than we can live without water. And we need to understand that and then we need to understand the threats that there are, even in a water-rich area like we have in the Great Lakes and St. Lawrence. We are the most water-rich area in the world. We have 20% of the surface fresh water right here at our front door. And we need to understand, appreciate, protect that, and figure out how to get involved in protecting that in our own personal lives, not being abusive of it, not taking it for granted and, and really uh, enjoy the refreshness of uh, refreshing nature of a drink of cold water. It's still the best thing they could, you can do for yourself. And then go out and do something about it in your own personal life and in the balance of your life. William Rao, I'm from uh, Bloomington, Illinois. I'm a professor emeritus in industrial sociology at Illinois State University. Fracking involves the use of a relatively new technology to essentially drill through thin horizontal layers that have uh, hydrocarbon, uh, natural gas, or oil. It is a last-ditch effort on the part of the fossil fuel industry to extend its life for another 30 or 40 years because it's run out of all the good, cheap stuff. It's also the uh, pipeline industry, it's the refineries that are now uh, in the Gulf Coast, for example, are now exporting 60% of the oil they refine. A lot of this has to do with exports. There are pending before the U.S. Department of Energy something like uh, 10 applications for liquefied natural gas terminals to export uh, liquefied natural gas overseas. Uh, and so the idea that this is all about na uh, nas uh, national energy independence is a joke. It's just simply not true. This is why a lot of big money is r rushing into this whole process. And they want their hands on hydrocarbons in Illinois, even if it will leave large areas of the state devastated in the process. It's about money. They always think of this country as being a place where people, you can get rich at any cost. You can get rich over the land. You can pollute it. You can do whatever you want to, you can dump your trash on it, and you can always go somewhere else. That's the attitude that I'm seeing. And I don't see, I don't see any redemption for that kind of thinking other than uh, some like-minded folks who know that their lives depend upon water, soil, and air. It's real, it's real easy to understand that unless you have that dollar sign block in your brain. I think we tend to um, believe because we're such beings gifted with transcendence, and gifted with uh, uh, being made in the image and likeness of God, which is what we all uh, in the Orthodox world believe, and other faith communities, of course, that therefore we have some kind of a right to do what we want with whatever's around us. Well, we don't. And we're going to give an account of that. I see the biggest problem as economic. The proponents of fracking thinks it's his major benefit on these jobs. Uh-uh, not so. A temporary boom in jobs, but when the resource plays out, those jobs collapse. Just go through the 840 ghost towns in southern Illinois, about half of them old coal mining towns, and you'll know what happens when a natural resource plays out. A town holds up and dies. They're going to frack in the Shawnee National Forest. So what's going to happen? The tourist trade is going to go down the tubes. All those organic wineries, all the peach orchards are going to be on the chopping block. Any organic farmers are going to be gone. People who want to buy a, a home there to retire or a second home, a vacation home, are not going to do so. 
It's called a crowding out effect. Natural resource extraction crowds out everything else. My name is Mark Denzer. I'm a business owner on the uh, Cache River, which is the northernmost cypress swamp in the country. I am a uh, canoe and uh, pirog uh, uh, rental service. I rent out boats, canoes on the river. I do guided tours. Uh, we rent out boats on a daily basis. We're open seven days a week the northernmost cypress swamp in the country and it's a very special place as far as migratory birds. It's one of the largest freshwater uh, rivers that's in southern Illinois. I'm concerned about fracking, one, uh, for the health of uh, our communities here in southern Illinois, uh, both native and non-native of course. Uh, we're just now starting to get attention with the tourism industry involving the wineries, horseback riders, hikers, backpackers, rock climbers. It's all becoming a, a very, very uh, sought after place as far as visiting. The biggest concern I have with fracking is that it um, would create an image um, that, uh, and it, it, you know, once you poison the water, you know, um, that no one's wanna, no one is going to want to come down here um, and visit. My name is Steve Hudson. I'm a county commissioner of Pope County, Illinois. We oversee the finances of the county and also any ordinances, sometimes what we can regulate and things like that. What I've read and learned about the fracking is when these oil companies happen to sign up, start signing up these leases with people and offer them, uh, you know, so much for their property while they're during the lease and this comes up and then the word gets out well you know they're going to do some drilling in here and we're going to create jobs and stuff and everything like that but most of my knowledge is not necessarily does all these jobs come from the area is, is where they're from where they start at it's outside jobs that people come with these companies and stuff so it may not be that big of an economic boom to this area my name is Dr. Laura Chamberlain and I'm an organizer for Stop the Frack Attack on Illinois and also the Illinois Coalition for a Moratorium on Fracking. The natural gas and oil industry are coming into um, Illinois to frack and it's all about their profits. There are a number of issues around fracking. There's water contamination, there's air pollution, there's earthquakes, there's uh, economic issues, uh, there's a boom and bust economic cycle that is created, um, driving down uh, land values and property values and they're flashing a lot of money in the communities that they want to frack, and they're also flashing a lot of money in Springfield. We're here to tell Southern Illinois folks something. They do not understand what's coming their way. They think it's going to be a well here and a well there. I hope that the videographers can see this. This is a map of the Bakken oil fields in North Dakota. This is what the oil companies are comparing Central Illinois and Southern Illinois to. I'll hold it up for a second. And I'm also gonna pass it out. So this is 100 miles by 50, and it's over 3,000 wells. This level of drilling is incompatible with safe living for the residents, for the children, for the animals, for the elderly. My name is William Carr. I'm a resident of Pope County, Illinois, landowner. Back in 2006 and 2007, the landmen wanting to uh, lease oil properties uh, started coming around this area. And finally, during the year, summer of 2007, I s broke down and signed a lease, which I immediately regretted. But I thought, well, as it has in the past, it probably would never amount to anything anyway, and it would just eventually go away. It was a five-year lease, giving them the right to uh, drill for oil and natural gas. And uh, they were not very clear in the lease about the so-called enhanced recovery methods that they proposed to use, or I might have caught this sooner. But uh, what they ha had was to inject water, brine, and other fluids into the subsurface strata, as well as any industry enhanced recovery methods. Hydraulic fracking w wasn't even on my radar scope. 
Three years later, I started hearing about this hydraulic fracturing and horizontal drilling, all of the potential hazards connected to it. Before the lease ran out, I decided I would write to the lease leasee and uh, ask them politely if they would allow the lease to uh, expire. As I said in my letter, I said uh, the reason for this request is that since signing the lease, I have become acutely aware of the potential hazards associated with horizontal drilling and hydraulic fracturing. The array of potential, potentially hazardous chemicals used and the broader environmental issues involved. Of particular concern to me are the potential long and short term risks to the health and well being of neighbors and the broader community as the result of possible contamination of the aquifer, groundwater, springs, etc. I would not have entertained entering into our lease had I been aware of the array of potential risks and hazards associated with this type of uh, uh, extraction. And... Uh, What'd they say? They... I haven't heard from them since. Just a few days after sending the letter to the original leaser, I received a check in the mail from the new company and a letter telling me they are exercising their option to extend the lease another five years. I still had a little bit of time a few days before the lease was actually ready to lapse or be renewed in this case. And uh, I wrote a very similar letter to the oil company explaining why I wanted him, if possible, to allow the lease to lapse. And with that letter, I returned the check. The risks of losing our water and the quality of life in this area is, is just certainly not worth uh, whatever little I would get out of it. People, once they realize what is going on and what it does to the ground, that they're going to decide not to support it. If that chemical ever got into that water supply, you're talking about a major problem. But my stake in it is just, just as, as an everyday citizen that doesn't want to see this county become a wasteland. I lived here all my life and I love it here. It's one of the best places in the world to live. And I think we owe it to our next generations that we leave it better than what we've had it. And we need to take care of this land. Every individual needs to start. It starts with them that you can do something about it. And it takes one person to stand up and then everybody else can join. Something about the land that you don't want to destroy. I mean, the land is uh, here and this is a beautiful place. It's uh, a national forest. And uh, industrializing the area would just totally destroy the uh, uh, quality of life here. It's life. If you value life, if you hold that as a kind of sacred um, thing, as a part of a much larger picture that we can barely understand, then any assault on water has to be taken extremely seriously. And those of us who have children or grandchildren are concerned about what kind of planet, what kind of world we are leaving for them. We're blessed in Chicago having Lake Michigan and being able to turn on our, our water faucet every morning, make our coffee, have a drink, wash our clothes, uh, go for a swim, and oftentimes don't think about uh, what it takes to keep that water uh, safe and sanitary and uh, it's, it's so vital for everything that we do for human life. I'm quite aware of fracking. I've been involved in the uh, anti-fracking protests. I have a son that lives in Carbondale, and, and uh, so I have also a personal interest in the southern Illinois where uh, the majority of the fracking will be taking place if, 
if it's not uh, if it's not stopped. And I, I um, am concerned with what it's going to do to the water supply in southern Illinois, what it's going to do to, to the earth. Uh, at first, uh, before I became knowledgeable about the topic, I thought that the um, natural gas was, uh, was a great um, substitute for like, like uh, petroleum or cars being powered by, by gas and that. And uh, fought vigorously to close down our coal-fired power plants in Chicago. And um, one, of, one of the options was to replace them with uh, natural gas power plants and however the uh, the fracking it's a f very frightening process and uh, one that I think is not healthy for the environment in general. Water is sacred. It's something to be protected, to be cherished, to rationalize, to be used very carefully, to be passed on to other generations. In the fracking industry it is a throw away commodity. They use it up and throw it away. And the uh, water that they're throwing away is often radioactive. It is hypersaline and will kill trees. It has all sorts of toxic elements it picks up from the shale, barium, arsenic, lead, you name it. With everything we, could, we do, looking at the environment, the economy, and the society, the kind of the triple bottom line, if you will, uh, people are, are looking out into the future and saying, okay, how can we conduct these many enterprises that we're engaged in, where looking at it from a pollution standpoint, an energy standpoint, a raw material standpoint, how can we do this in a much less intrusive way, where with minimal resource investment, you can basically generate energy indefinitely. My faith informs my views on making this world a better world. And that comes from a Hebrew word, tikkun olam. I think Chicago is basically unaware because they take it for granted. All we have to do is turn on the tap and the water comes pouring out. Very few people even ask uh, whether or not our water is clean because we want to believe that it is. So we turn on water that is not necessarily as clean as it should be anymore, and we simply drink it without understanding what the consequences can be to our bodies and to our children. There's a lot of profit to be made, and our new religion is not tikkun olam. Our new religion is profit at all costs. We are stewards of God's creation. We're here to take care of it. It's not ours. It doesn't belong to us. God created it, and it is good. And we're entrusted with taking care of the creation. Oftentimes, I think humanity believes itself to be the pinnacle of creation and therefore can do what it wants with creation. If we look in the Genesis account of creation, we see that humanity was created last, and doesn't even have its own day, but shares it with things that creep and crawl. So things that we don't want creeping and crawling in our beds was created on the same day that humankind was created. Every other species, every other element has its own day for creation, except for humankind. We are this land. And I'd like to be able to, in order for us to return, our land has to be maintained uh, it has to, and has to extend itself uh, uh, back to a state of, of cleanliness. And I know greedy people who have no conscience uh, see it differently, but it's very simple that they see it differently. It's because you have to have a conscience in order to love this land. What you see in my heart is what you see what's left around us here that has a sense of uh, beauty left in it. And as far as spiritual is concerned, we do have a sense of this land being created for us, that this land was made for us. And uh, I just want to bust out into a Peter, Paul, and Mary song or something. This land was made for you and me. Uh, my land. <laughs> the deepest structural poverty in the United States is in former natural, national, natural resource extraction areas where the resource played out. Now the thing about uh, the uh, fracking is these wells, a third of them, are subcommercial in five years. Half of them are subcommercial in 10 to 12 years. This is going to be a quick boom and a very fast bust.
and a lot of towns are going to eat dust as a consequence of this industry. I don't think the tsunamis of the world and the earthquakes of the world and the natural disasters we're experiencing are by accident. I think we've brought them upon ourselves, not because God's punishing us, but because nature has a way of replenishing itself and needs a way of taking care of itself. If we're not going to take care of it, nature's going to take care of it. And um, if we're not careful, we're bound to experience more of that kind of disaster. There's nothing better than to be able to take a jump from the bluff into a river of pure water, or at least as pure as we know purity to be in this life. And to be under, uh, to be under there and to feel that water and sensation, especially in the heat of summer, and to come to the surface in the green of your homeland, I mean, that means everything to me. But, but people who are greedy and without conscience uh, don't find pleasure in that kind of thing. I mean, we got some somewhat clean rivers still left in this part of the world. But if fracking comes in here, they can forget it. If there's no water, if there's no water, there's no tourism. If there's no good air to breathe, there's no tourism. You can forget all those buildings and huts that you put up there to attract tourists and, and, and uh, deer hunters and all of that sort of thing. Because if fracking takes this country, takes over this country, you don't understand that that is lost forever. Uh, tourism is a renewable resource. Water, once it's poisoned, is not renewable. It's done. You're finished.